In this video, I wanna give you some real world experience as someone that's had the M1 Mac mini with 16 gigs of RAM since that device came out. We're talking day one. I was there, didn't go anywhere, just pre-ordered it and it showed up at my place. And so I've also lived through all of the craziness that's happened since those M1 machines first came out and Apple was like, yo, we have our own silicone now. And so we have M1 Pro, M1 Max, and of course M1 Ultra. But today I just wanna take all of that and everything that I've learned for the last little, God knows how long this computer's been out and apply it to what I've experienced with this new Mac Studio. And this is the base model Mac Studio. So this is the M1 Mac mini versus the Mac Studio. I'm gonna get this out of the way right now. I'm just not a huge fan of benchmarks. I find a lot of them relatively arbitrary. And even when people comment, they're like, well, what if I wanna use Resolve? And what if I use Premiere? And what if I do After Effects and all that kind of stuff? And I just usually tell people, the best thing to do, honestly, if you're unsure if your workflow will be supported by these machines, you kind of just gotta buy one and if it doesn't work, return it. It's really not the end of the world. Apple is a massive company and they want you to be happy. So if you buy something and you don't like it, you can obviously return it or switch it for something better or it might be overkill and you can get something worse. That being said, I do wanna help you make an informed decision before you go through that headache so you don't really have to return something. So this is gonna be a lot more practical real world than charts and benchmarks and times. From a really top down level, I gotta say, the M1 Mac mini has been fantastic. It's been one of my favorite computers I've probably ever owned. It just seems like anything I throw at this machine, it just seems to work. It never really gives me too many headaches. And it wasn't until recently, which you know, maybe there's some conspiracy there with these new machines coming out, but it wasn't until Mac OS Monterey, I was like, this things starting to feel a little bit slow. And I was running out of application memory quite a bit in Final Cut and even Lightroom. And I was like thinking, man, I really wish I could update the RAM in this machine. Even though 16 gigs is good for unified memory, it would be really nice to have 32. And so that's why when the Mac Studio came out, it wasn't that I really wanted to replace the Mac Mini, it was just that it's my only option if I wanna get more RAM in a Mac Mini. It's also nice that you obviously get the M1 Max instead of the standard M1, which is a massive jump just in its CPU. But as we talk a little bit more of the real world, I don't think that's much of a difference. Really, I just kind of wanted to get 32 gigs of RAM in my Mac Mini, and unfortunately, this is kind of the only way to do that. I think it'd be really great if Apple could just come out with a 32 gig option on the M1 Mac Mini. I just think that would just fit a really nice niche because for the price, it's so hard for me to recommend anything but an M1 Mac Mini if you're looking for a solid desktop computer. It's just so good for the price. Nothing comes close to this thing. None of the laptops, you know, you can kind of make a case for the M1 MacBook Air, which is also great. But in my personal opinion, I like having a desktop. I like having something that I sit down and work at and I don't have to carry it with me everywhere. And it's not something that actually comes with me. My work is dedicated to a specific location. And that's a psychological thing, but I just like having a desktop for that reason, which is why I don't really lean too heavily on laptops for work. So in a roundabout way, I kind of had to get the studio because I wanted more RAM and I was a little bit worried about future-proofing my system because I was like, you know, down the road, if I start getting more cameras and start doing heavier workloads and all that kind of stuff, I'm kind of screwed. I'm stuck with this 16 gig. So if I really want to get in on this now, let's just try this Mac Studio out. And here's my thoughts. Yes, this machine is faster than the M1 Mac Mini. There's absolutely no doubt about that. When it came to H.264 codecs, which can be quite heavy sometimes with this A7 IV, I could get upwards of like six streams of the H.264 10-bit 4K 60 on the studio before anything was showing any signs of sweating, and it really wasn't. And it would export still faster than real time. On the M1 Mac Mini, I could still get to like four streams of that codec, and it was still doing relatively well, and it was only about two minutes slower than the studio. So relatively speaking, from a practical standpoint, one or two minutes, is that a really a huge jump? Not really. But if you're doing heavier stuff where you got like four or five, six layers of 4K, a whole bunch of text, a whole bunch of graphics, plugins, all that kind of stuff, of course you're gonna get more legroom out of the studio. But for my personal use, I actually don't see a huge difference in the video performance between these two machines especially if you shoot HEVC, which I do. When it comes to HEVC and H.265 codecs, I keep recommending to people to switch over to that if your computer supports it, as well as your camera. But honestly, they're like relatively neck and neck between the M1 Mac Mini and the Studio, which just goes to show how well the M1 chips are working with HEVC codecs. So if you are in a position where you're like, look, I wanna get a new camera and I wanna get a new computer, I would say look at a camera that does HEVC and I, I think you'll be fine editing with the M1 Mac Mini or pretty much literally any of the M1 machines. They will all just rip 
through HEVC. What I will say though, is the experience during editing is a bit snappier and zippier. I do see on the M1 Mac Mini, you know, waveforms will take a little longer to load. Sometimes you get some drop frames just going through a timeline. Things I can easily manage and overcome. It doesn't really add much headache to my workflow, but I will say using the studio, all of that is lightning fast and you just really don't notice it at all. So if that comfort and that sort of capability is something you strive for, the studio is gonna give you that peace of mind while editing that you're really not gonna hit any roadblocks or hiccups it's gonna be smooth and just truly a snappier and speedier experience all throughout, but it's like a perception thing. If you didn't know that there was a faster option, I don't really think you'd say the M1 Mac Mini was slow. If you're more into photos than video and you're editing a lot in programs like Lightroom, I would say there's definitely more of a significant jump using the Mac Studio. This has been a headache for me a little bit on the Mac Mini using Lightroom. I just like to the point where I'm like, I just don't even wanna use this program. It runs so crappy. On the Studio, it has been relatively seamless. And on top of that, it's literally twice as fast exporting all my raw files. So like that's kind of a pretty significant time jump and just peace of mind that I don't really have to worry about it while I'm editing photos if things are going to slow down. So if you're looking at both of these machines as more of a photographer, I would probably lean towards the Mac Studio. And it's weird, like I know that the chip is faster and all that stuff, like we're going from M1, we're skipping M1 Pro right to M1 Max with this, but I was kind of just like assuming there would be more of a performance boost. And it's not that it's not faster, it is definitely faster, but it's not monumentally faster. And I don't know if it's $2,000 or $1,000 faster than the M1 Mac Mini. And I think, especially if you already have an M1 Mac Mini and you're not having issues with it, definitely do not upgrade. What I will say is I just want something that is peace of mind for the next three, four years where I don't really have to think about it at all. And that's kind of why I'm leaning towards more the Mac Studio and that's probably why I'll end up keeping it because at 32 gigs of RAM, which I know I was just, just barely stretching that 16 gig in the M1 Mac Mini, I think I'll be fine with the 32 in the Mac Studio. And I know there's way more headroom with that processor. If by any chance my workflow increases and gets more demanding day to day with the things that I do, I'll just know that machine's there and it's gonna be reliable for years to come. When it comes to more just general use of both machines, I would say having all of the IO of the Mac Studio is honestly really nice. Of course, you're gonna want more ports. I really love that it has an SD card reader on the front of the machine. One of the things that kind of bugs me about that though is that I really would love to mount this machine under my desk. So I don't know if I'd really get that much use out of that front SD card reader, but it's nice that it's there and it's actually kind of pushing me towards leaving it on the desk so I can just quickly add my SD card. That's something I do every single day is just put an SD card into this machine. And it just means I don't have to have a dongle for it. So it's really nice that it has that front SD card reader and those two ports. Otherwise, all the other IO, I don't really see a huge difference between the Mac Studio and the Mini. For the way that I use it, the ports are pretty much the same and I don't really think there's much of a comparison there to make. One last little interesting thing that I found is now that I have the studio display, I have seen a pretty decent performance hit on the M1 Mac Mini trying to drive this 5K panel. So part of it is like, I think a lot of the slowdown that I'm feeling between the two machines might be just that I'm trying to drive this 5K panel with the M1 Mac Mini as well, because previously I just had a regular 4K panel and I just think going up to 5K is actually stressing that machine quite a bit. So a lot of stuff that used to feel a little bit snappier and zippier, having now used this M1 Mac Mini with the studio display, I do know notice quite a significant slowdown in regular use case scenarios. So that if you're looking to get a studio display, I probably wouldn't recommend the Mac mini. I would say definitely go with something that at least has an M1 Pro in it or the M1 Max. I just really don't think the base model configurations of M1 can really drive that display and do all the things you need to do simultaneously. But if you're just using a regular monitor, I still think the M1 Mac mini is wonderful. And that overall is what I think. For the price to power ratio, all of that, the M1 Mac mini is still just such an incredible machine. And it's for 95% of people, if not higher, I think the perfect desktop for most people. I'm a creative professional that works in filmmaking and photography and all that stuff. And so I can justify, you know, an extra thousand bucks or an extra 1500 bucks for something that's gonna save me time and money overall. But for most people, I think, you know, still look at those base level M1s. Those machines just are just so good for the money that don't get caught up in all this hype that everyone has these new machines and I gotta get one and I have to have one, I have to have the best. Especially if you already have one and you're really not noticing much of a slowdown. It's very easy to get caught up in all of this and say like, oh, my machine's crap now because the new one's out and it feels slower and I don't know what to do. And I fall victim of this, 100% I do. Like, look at all the stuff on my desk. But I also know that I do do this stuff for work and I need it for work, not only just YouTube, but my actual client work as well. And so take your brain away from the YouTubers, take your brain away from even professionals, look at it specifically with what you do. If it's slow and things are having issues, 
Try a Mac Studio, try a better chip, try more RAM, return it if it doesn't work. The best thing you can do is take some advice from someone like myself and then make an informed decision going in to remove headaches and stress and BS in your own life. Even on the new channel, I'm very bad at outros, so I'm just gonna stop, I'm gonna stop talking right now. We're gonna end this video. Leave a comment if you have questions about these two machines, but don't go into it like, I use Resolve and I use this. I can't give you a specific answer to your workflow. I can only give you a generalization of the things that I've played with and all that, whatever. Otherwise, don't waste my time. I don't wanna waste yours and I'm wasting it right now. Don't waste mine. We're wasting each other's time right now. You should go. You should go. I don't know why you're still here. You should probably leave. This is a huge time suck of your life right now. Just staring at me and I'm staring at you. Well then, what another, well that's a gr great video. Another, gr another great video. Peace. <laughs>